Hey everybody, welcome back to CSS3 in 30 days. Today is day 15 and we're going to be coding up a sticky sidebar. What is a sticky sidebar and why would you use it? Well, a sticky sidebar is essentially just a sidebar that sticks to the side of the page as you scroll so that the content in that sidebar is, remains always visible. And the reason why you'd want to do that is maybe you have an opt-in or a lead magnet, a subscription form, a call to action, uh, maybe an order purchase. Maybe you have a checkout and then the sidebar has the checkout details with the price and the taxes and so on. And as you're scrolling down that long page, that sidebar remains in view so that you can always see important details, maybe even the checkout button. Something like that. There are, some, there are a few ideas uh, to use a sticky sidebar. So jump over here in my browser and let's see what that looks like. Here we simply have a info page. We're doing that info page, student page, and final page convention that we've been doing uh, a couple times. And essentially this is just the instructions with two buttons. One takes you to the student version, which you're going to be playing around with, and the final version, which you can use for reference. Let's go ahead and check out the final version just to see what's going on. Here is the layout. We got a left side, uh, left content with long filler text and the sidebar, as you can see, remains in view. And that's kind of interesting. Uh, you can position it any way you really want. And if you wanted to use JavaScript or you wanted to get even crazier, you can wait until you scroll down until this look, this part of the page, and then you have the sticky sidebar start moving. But for this case, we're just going to use CSS and keep it simple and just have that sidebar just remain in its position. And it is quite easy. It shouldn't take us very long at all. Here's a student version. We haven't done any styles here in terms of laying out the sidebar. Sidebar is in fact down here with no styles whatsoever and it looks really bad. So let's jump over to our code editor. Make sure you download the sticky sidebar number 15 course files and I'll wait here just a moment for you to go ahead and do that. that should be enough time here in the code editor. I'm going to show you what the, the code looks like real quick and then we're going to get started. So the index file is simply that info page that has the information uh, with the instructions. You really don't need to concern yourself with it. It is the student.html and the final.html. Uh, those are the HTML files that you need to concern yourself with. I'll show you that in a sec. Sandbox.css is where you're going to style things up as usual. Final.css is where all of the styles are for you to reference just in case you need a little bit of help. So student.html looks like this. We have a div with the class of sticky sidebar lesson. We're going to use that class in a moment. It wraps everything, including the sandbox div, which is the left content and the sticky sidebar div, which is the sticky sidebar on the right. Those are the two, uh, two or three elements that you need to know and concern yourself with. So jump over into the sandbox.css and let's get ourselves coding, coding, coding. Let's get coding. Let's code sticky sidebar dash lesson, sticky dash sidebar dash lesson, sticky sidebar lesson, see. Width 80%, we're gonna say margin zero and auto. That's just gonna make those things look a little bit like so. There it is, a little bit less wide. And the reason we wanna do that is we wanna make some space for some things. Let's carry on. Sticky sidebar lesson after pseudo element, after virtual last child, after element, whatever we want to call that thing, the after display table content, empty string, clear both. What is this everybody? It is a clear fix. Clear fix. Okay. Uh, and that's just simply to allow the footer to stay put rather than collapsing up when we start floating the next element, which is the sticky sidebar lesson, and then the sandbox. We're gonna style this one up. It's gonna be nice and simple. We're gonna give it a width of 60%. And then we're gonna we're gonna margin 0, 0, 40. That is zero on the top, zero on the left and right, 40 on the bottom. Just give it some space from the footer. And we're gonna float that left. So now if we save that and check it out, footer stays put, and the this content is over on the left at 60% width. 
Sticky sidebar is over on the right. Problem is the sticky sidebar doesn't look right, so we're gonna style it up real nice and purdy here. So let's scroll down uh, and do one last set of styles. Sticky sidebar, coming for you, sticky sidebar. Background, we're gonna make it that pale blue color, which is E7, EEF1. Padding, 40 pixels, 40 pixels, 60 pixels. That's 40 in the top, 40 in the left and right, 60 on the bottom. And we're gonna go box sizing. We're gonna say border box. What does border box do? It essentially means that the padding that you add to the element doesn't add any width to the box itself. It just maintains the, the, the width that I determine and the padding stays on the inside. By default, when you add padding to a box, it increases the width and that causes issues when you're doing math for floating and so on and so forth. We want the box to say the same width that we determine and the padding on the inside, if this makes any sense whatsoever, to, to, to maintain the same width, but the padding on the inside stays within there, contained. So that's what that does. Border radius, two pixels, a nice little subtle all the way around. We're gonna give it a box shadow, and this is just gonna be an offset, zero 12 pixels, zero negative six pixels, and then F. A, 90, A3, all that's doing is that little 3D effect, that offset pale blue shadow makes it look 3D. You'll see in a sec here, let's go check it out. There it is, it is over here on the right and it's got that two pixel border radius and then offset shadow. But the problem with the sticky sidebar is that there's no space in between the two, it doesn't look very good and, and that is a problem right there. So let's go ahead and continue over here, we're gonna say position, position fixed. That's gonna fix it in place, but we gotta tell it where to stay put. 5% from the right, the width will be 36%. That's to give it a little bit of a gap between the sandbox, because we don't want it to be the full width of its of what's left. We wanna give it some uh, space from that sandbox. I wanna float that right, save that. Come over here, check out the student version. Sticky sidebar. Self-contained, when I scroll down, it stays put nice and in place. And really, that is it. Now, I have a little challenge for you if you wanna take this a bit further outside of the scope of this lesson, but fully something that you should try, is make this responsive. Currently, it is not responsive. So if I resize this, we're just gonna have a sticky sidebar that, you know, it doesn't look very good, the text isn't right, these, these shouldn't be side by side on a mobile device. They should be stacked or the sidebar should disappear or whatever it is that you feel necessary. I want you to go ahead, add some media queries here in your sandbox.css and stack these elements. Remove the floats, remove the position fixed, do whatever you feel is necessary to make this look right on mobile devices. I suggest you do that as a little challenge. See what you can come up with. And I hope today's lesson was valuable to you today. Hope you have a few ideas running through your head of how you might want to use this in your own projects. Thanks for hanging out for a few minutes, and I'll see you tomorrow in day number 16.